Welcome to puzzle solving number two. In today's video, I'm going to solve a puzzle I haven't seen before. And I'm going to do it alongside you, the viewer, which means that you're going to get to see in a very transparent and honest way how I'm going to struggle, how I'm going to go for ideas that may or may not be the answer to the puzzle. And very importantly, just trial and error, trial and error. Let's go. So as I said, I haven't seen this, this position before other than when I was getting ready to record this. So I'm going to evaluate. So you imagine you're, you're thrown into a position, you're lacking context, you're lacking um, any, any sort of storyline. So I need to know what's going on. Um, and that's why we evaluate. So evaluation is taking a look at material balance, king safety, pawn structure, piece activity, uh, and many things that we can more or less um, give ourselves some context uh, from. So material balance seems to be um, white seems to be up pawn. So we have three pawns and then four here. That makes it seven. And then we only have six pawns as black. We have both queens, rooks, and knights. So it's it's not very good already from the get go. Black is down a pawn. And the next thing I'm going to consider is peace activity. For instance, I think this knight is better than the one on d8. Um, queens and rooks, okay, maybe queen, queen and rook, white has a better queen and rook. But peace activity wise, I think a high priority is this knight on d8, which already from the start seems to be pretty, pretty in a pretty dangerous spot. For instance, d8, you don't want your knight on d8, right? It's, it's pretty, it, it might be stuck. So peace activity wise, I think maybe black is better just because of the knight on d8. Um, what else? Pawn structure. Given that we're down a pawn, I don't think pawn structure is such a big deal. But what I can say is that this pawn being on f4 rather than f5 would be a little bit more annoying. Because this knight on e5 is pretty comfortable. So maybe I should consider that in an endgame. But as I said, I think a high priority is going to be trying to kill this knight on d8, which is far away from, 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 from everyone else. Or just in a weak spot, which is attacked by my rook, and I can play queen e7 and attack these two. Now... As I already kind of transitioned, before we start talking about candidate moves and calculating move by move, we have to give a number or we have to just conclude what's, what's the result of our, our evaluation. Is white better? Is black better? This is what we should do during a chess game. Because this is a puzzle, it's obvious that probably black is going to be better because it's black to play. Um, but let me, let me try to disconnect from this, this idea that we're in a puzzle. So let's think about this realistically. Um, it seems like black is struggling because material balance wise or we're, we're just simply down upon. But then we realize that this knight on d8 might be stuck. For instance, queen e7, as I said, is forking these two guys. So that already gives me a little bit of, a, of an idea that we, we might be able to do something. But during a ch chess game, I would have to calculate more to create an evaluation, which means that I can't evaluate just yet. If I had to pick a side, out of intuition, I would pick black because, well, okay, it's a puzzle. And of course, the knight is on d8 a little bit uh, in danger. But it's you're allowed, you should give yourself, um, uh, you should be able to have an initial evaluation, calculate a little bit and change your evaluation throughout your calculation. Okay, let's move on to candidate moves. So once you've evaluated, now you're allowed to go for candidate moves. This is the very organized and best way of doing, uh, best way of calculating. Candidate moves is you consider, you make a list of three or four moves that uh, attract your eye, attract you. And um, after that, you eliminate little by little until you have pretty much an only move. For instance, I have my candidate moves, uh, queen e7, rook takes d8, and queen c7. Oh, sorry, that's not queen c7. Queen c7. Okay, those are my candidate moves. Queen e7, queen, rook takes d8, queen c7. Out of those three, before I move on to queen e7, which I'm very excited about, and trust me when I tell you, I'm really holding myself. But before I go into queen e7, I've learned that it's worth paying attention to these two in case there's even more of an obvious reply. For instance, rook takes d8, very forcing move, it's a capture. White is going to capture back, that's going to be check. I'm going to play king h7, and then we get this middle game where I stop calculating. Why? Because 
well, there are no more forcing moves. Okay, there's queen g6, but that's not working. There's rook h8, but that's not working. So I, st I, I, I can move on because there are no more forcing moves. So that's a safe way of evaluating them. I know when to evaluate because I know when we're, we don't have more forcing moves. So rook takes d8, rook takes d8, king h7. I evaluate that as white is better because white has an exchange plus a pawn. And I don't think my knight on e5 is enough compensation, which means that even though this knight is in, the, in an outpost and it's pretty strong, I think it's it's not going to be enough for me to even draw the game. The rook takes d8, I eliminate. Just like that, I only have queen e7 and queen c7. Okay, queen e7 and queen c7, let's see. Queen c7 attacks the, the rook and the knight. And after... After that, I have to go through the, through the same process of candidate moves for white. Before I do that, I'm going to consider queen c7. Maybe this is easier to eliminate. Uh, in which case, I would I would be pretty sure that queen c7 is the only one. But okay, queen e7. Candidate moves for white. Is there anything obvious? Hmm. It doesn't seem like it. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go by, by order. I'm going to pick either of these. Both of them seem to be difficult to eliminate or to, to discard easily. So I'm going to start with queen e7, which is my initial idea. Attacking the rook and attacking the knight. So, queen e7. Candidate moves for white. How does white save the knight? For instance, of course, if white goes something like rook d1, we're just going to take the knight, and we're winning. So, white has to do something pretty extreme. And I think knight e6 might be that only move. Uh, other than that, I don't see anything, as I was, I was saying. Queen e7, queen c7, 96. So queen e7, 96 is there, and queen c7 is 96. So I'm already comparing both of them. Before I go into one specific deep line, I'm being linear. Rather than being linear, I want to be have have a variety. I, I want to consider many moves. So compare them as well. Queen e7, 96. I can't take on d6. That's going to be checkmate. Queen e7, 96. Hmm. Queen c7, 96, rook takes e6, is that? Hmm. Queen e7, 96, candidate moves for black. Is there any way, any forced way, that I can do some damage here? It doesn't seem like it. I'm a little bit of a, in a stuck. A little bit stuck, sorry. I also have queen c7, and if 96, I take on e6. And if root takes e6, 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 sorry, I have the queen d7 idea. Which, for a moment, pretty much says, look, your rook is not doing much there. But white can always take on e5. I'm not sure about that. Queen c7, 96. Once again, if I take on d6, this is mate. Ah! And that's when I have an idea. So... The reason why 96 is so annoying is because queen takes g7 is there, right? So, there's this Spanish word, and I'm going to teach you a little bit of Spanish, that goes, jugada resultante, which is translates to resulting move. So, as a result of 96 being annoying after queen e7 or queen c7, I, re I, I have this res resulting move, h4, deviating, and, and, and well, okay, this, this, this queen has to deviate or, or to get off put from attacking g7 if that makes sense and for for instance my idea is h4 queen takes h4 and then queen e7 now of course it's not that easy i mean i'm assuming that there's some differences it's just a question of how to how to or to find them for instance h4 is there anything other than queen takes h4 there's queen there doesn't seem like it actually oh of course there's knight f7 then i'd say Yeah, but that's knight takes e5, and that's equal. So then I have another idea. I play queen e7, knight e6, and then h4. And just then, and only then, sorry, I should say, we're winning. Now, queen c7 is not working because after knight 6 we can't play h4. Knight takes e7 is there. So queen e7 is the answer. And after knight 6 we play h4, and then we win. There we go. Okay. Very important, I guess. So, I was struggling at the beginning because I didn't find this H H4 idea. I should have included that as my candidate moves. I failed to do that because 
at the end of the day, h4 is a very forcing move, so it should have es it, it escaped me because I didn't think of the motive of knight e6 and queen takes g7. I only realized that when I st once I started calculating. So I should have stopped. I should have said, okay, after queen e7, knight e6, candidate moves, which I did, but I missed h4. So I have to be more strict with myself. What happened to my brain, I I'm assuming, is that h4 is just blocked because it's it seems like it's just a blunder. It could be that I'm also tired. Uh, all, all of these factors are also important, but chess-wise, I think it was um, a lack of discipline of of going through move through move, all each forcing move, each move that creates a threat. Okay, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions about this puzzle, please let me know. And as always, have a nice day.